I like anime, but anime can be pretty bad. That's what I say when I reveal to someone my interest in anime. While one side of me loves their creativity, the passion of anime, the other part of me can't stand everything it does to hurt people. It can be hard to associate with the medium because of all of its less than fortunate tropes. So, treat this video like a disclaimer to any other time I talk about anime. I take issue with most everything on this list. I'll talk about the problems one at a time just to sort out my thoughts. The order they're in is purely for the sake of video flow. Just because something comes before something else, doesn't mean I think it's any more or less a problem. With that all said, let's talk about our- There's kind of an unspoken rule between me and my brother, and that's to never watch anime on a TV. Women in anime are so frequently objectified that you feel kind of bad just showing it to another person, making them think that you might agree with the things on screen. This is probably the first issue you'll ever run into as an anime fan, but for the sake of some in the audience, let's define what it is to objectify women. The Cambridge Dictionary defines it as to treat a person like a tool or toy, as if they had no feelings, opinions, or rights of their own. Now, does anime do this? Well, let's look at some staple tropes of shonen anime. A guy and a girl fall down, but the guy accidentally gropes the girl. The girl does not like this. A guy accidentally walks in on a girl undressing. The girl does not like this. And the dreaded Hot Springs episode, where the guys try and peek over at the girls while they're naked in the hot springs. The girls, obviously, do not like this. You can see what all of these have in common, right? The show is treating women like a tool for fan service, regardless of their feelings or opinions. Some may argue with the first two examples, because the men in the situation didn't intend to sexually harass the women. It was an accident. To those people, I think you're missing the forest for the trees. While the sexual harassment may not reflect badly on the characters themselves, it still says something about the show itself. The men may not see the women that way, but the show, regardless of that, treats the woman like a sexual object. It really feels like the undertones of misogyny run through the veins of most anime made for boys. Misogyny and objectification of women are inextricably linked. Objectifying fake women sends a message to real women. Your feelings and personality don't matter. You're only here to be a tool for others' satisfaction. To all two cis men in my audience, you don't have to wonder why women don't like being objectified. But there are also problems with the way a lot of women are written. Women are just treated disrespectfully in a lot of shonen anime. But we start to enter the realm of women are treated in anime how they are in real life, so pretty bad. Shonen is for boys. It's literally what it means, so inevitably, it's going to be drenched in the male gaze. I'd like to say it's getting better, but even modern shows like My Hero Academia are pretty bad in this regard. Let me be frank. Originally, I had a section just like the last one talking about racism in anime. I even voiced it. But while editing this video, I came across this one video by Basic Boy. And it was just, just blew everything I said out of the water. So instead of me giving a dumbed down version of the opinions of people of color, I'm just going to tell you to listen to the people of color. I'm afraid that paraphrasing what Basic Boy said in their video, an exploration of anti-blackness in the anime industry, may make people not want to watch it, because I already summed it up in a few minutes, as opposed to 50 minutes. So watch that video right now, I'll wait for you to get back. 
You watched it, right? Good. Best I can do as a white person on the internet is raise up the voices who don't have the benefits of white privilege. There are two purposes for this video. Number one, to simply raise awareness for the bad things in anime. Not really to educate. Because there are people out there much more knowledgeable and much more informative out there. And number two, just to let you know that I don't agree with these things. So you can comfortably watch my videos knowing, oh yeah, this person isn't a bigot. Because when it comes to people who talk about anime, people can be very, very bad. This is actually a subject I can talk about anecdotally because I'm agender and pansexual. Come on, phase. It's apparently a non-binary's job to tell you that they're non-binary all the time. Anyway, the phobia and transphobia in anime. Uh, it's complicated. Japan is generally more accepting, but I wouldn't really call it progressive most of the time. It's different, you know? You have to take it case by case. I'd say modern anime are better than older anime. I'd say the hardest part is that anime doesn't quite have the vocabulary to articulate queerness. While Osana from Komi is treated as non-binary, they're very vague with how they describe them. Again, Japan has had a history independent of my own culture, so things can rarely be kept on a straight line from progressive American to conservative American. Take for example, Ujoshi. Ujoshi are typically straight women who enjoy reading and fantasizing about romantic and or sexual relationships between two men. While this may seem like an obvious dub for the progressive side of things, it's a bit more complicated than that. Remember, this content is made for heteros. They don't really care about being queer. They just like guys and would rather not have a woman in there because they're not attracted to women. It's not there to give voices to queer people or tell queer stories. It's just there so some straight women can get the rocks off. That's not the worst fate in the world. Lesbians probably have it way worse than gay men because they're constricted to the prison like male gays men have on women, rather than the loose rope women have on the expectations of men in queer relationships. But boys' love is way bigger than girls, so that's what my main concern is with. Ultimately, while still pretty dodgy, Joshi at least accept the existence of queer people. That is genuinely preferable to people who hate the existence of queer people. But heed my words, Ujoshis, in 30 years, once all the homo and transphobic people have died out, we're coming for your bitch ass, so enjoy it while you can, straight woman. Japan has a rich queer history, so it bears repeating. Do your own research on the topic. This video's primary purpose is to make it aware that I don't like these issues. <coughs> Burp? Apparently, when it comes to body weight in Japan, they're very cutthroat. There's immense social pressure to not be overweight over there, so it's naturally extended into their art. The pressure, however, has led to their art not depicting heavy people in a positive light. The best you'll see out of them is like a comic relief or a nice old mom. At worst, they're treated how you are in the Harry Potter books. They're greedy, they're stupid, they don't have any friends and usually a bit self-centered. Needless to say, these stereotypes are inaccurate, but still permeate society because connotations with fat and ugly and ugly bad have been around for generations. I don't really have any convincing to do here. You know it, you hate it. Watch some videos. Lollies are gross. Japan has an interesting history with the age of consent in child pornography. A gross, slimy history. 
I get if you like a character like Kana because she's cute, but I don't really want to see her bare ass staring at me because she's playing the most lewd children's game in existence. Can she not, like, make pants? And Edidu? Come on, guys, that's just poop. It's Snake Woman, that's a child you were harassing. Please, go away. I don't like Dragon Maid, if you couldn't tell. You're allowed to write children into your stories. You can even have Moe children. Just let them wear some pants, goddammit. Sometimes it's hard to call if it's weird. My line is that the sleepy princess in Demon Castle. The show revels in how cute she is, but it never treats her like a sexual object. If you are even a little weirder than the line I've drawn, and then I'm gonna think a little less of you for it. Plenty of people think that's a bit harsh of me, but as a queer person, I have a history of being falsely called a pedo, so I don't fuck around with this shit. Some people just don't question why children are put in these situations, and up until a certain point, I didn't think it was any cause of concern either. But once you start to really think about what they're doing, you realize that these people are just attracted to children. In Japan, it isn't the serious crime we see it as. It's just a weird kink. That's the reality of the situation. For a lot of newer anime fans, it may be hard to believe. But that's just the way it is, unfortunately. All we can do in the West is spread awareness. These children need to put on some pants. Now, we reach a sad reality about anime. Most anime aren't greenlit because executives have a burning love for the medium of animation. No. Most anime are commercials for something. Even if the project ends up being a beautiful work of art like Cowboy Bebop. Cowboy Bebop was still made to sell spaceship toys. Now, it doesn't mean that the directors, the animators, and the writers don't have any passion it's just that the reason they're getting paid is because they sell toys. It's that tug-of-war artists have to play to get what they want. A naive part of me wishes artists could make what they want, not what sells. Unfortunately, capitalism. Capitalism strikes again. All sorts of artists, not just animators, are treated poorly in the industry. From low pay to grueling hours, companies will make you think twice before entering the industry. You should check out the animator's dormitory if you want to learn more. Admittedly, I don't know as much as I should about the topic. This one's purely a taste thing. Anime, like TV shows and movies, can be pretty samey at times. I'd like to say there are no two anime that are exactly alike, but come on now. Most anime are targeted towards the same audience, that being young people. So obviously, you repeat the things that have previously worked with that audience. That's how genres are made, but it can get stale at times. It's just a me thing, but I'm not the biggest fan of high schoolers as a setting. It's probably because I'm a high schooler right now. I'm kind of weird with media, because I don't like seeing people in my situation that aren't myself. Do you get what I mean? Some of my favorite anime are those that have a character with a lot of interiority at the helm. It's not that I hate high schools as a setting, I just don't like it as a substitute for an otherwise more interesting setting. Shit's gotta sell. I get that. I can make peace with but it just so happens that sex sells. So by god, are they gonna put sex in anime? While the actual act of sexual intercourse isn't all that common in anime, the medium has an obsession with showcasing attractive bodies. I already talked about it a bit, but that was more how it affects women as a whole. This is more how it affects the work itself. 
The oppression of real-life women is a bit more important to me than the subjective quality of fiction, but god, I can't help but talk about the subjective quality of fiction, can I? Japanese laws for what you can show in kids' media are relatively lax compared to America's. So, people in charge of anime and manga found out that you can just sell softcore porn, and kids will buy it because they don't have access to real porn. That leaves a million anime that don't have much value outside of their fan service. Or, more commonly, the value has been thrown overboard to make room for the fan service. Listen, I couldn't give any less of a shit from a Puritan standpoint. I don't think there's anything immoral about sex at all. As long as there's meaningful consent, then people aren't minors, and a few other things. Go fuck all you want. Just don't have boobs in place of an actual meaningful story. If I wanted porn, I would have bought porn. Regardless of all of this, I still like anime. Not because I can overlook these flaws and act like they aren't there, but just accept that they're a part of the work and try to do better in the future. I really hope these problems become things of the past, and we'll be able to unconditionally enjoy anime, regardless of our gender, skin color, or sexual orientation. Anime has a magic to it that can't be replicated anywhere else, and I hate to see the magic being brought down by all of these flaws. In the making of this video, I realized that pointing out the offensive parts of anime can get you hated by a large part of the anime community. And while one part of me wants to say, let them hate me all they want, I'm here and I'm queer, another part of me is just sad. Sad that people will continue to be hurt unless something is done. When someone says, what you're doing is hurting me personally, the first response shouldn't be self-defense. If you find this video, and you don't like what I've said because you indulge in these things I call problems, don't be offended, or make a video defending yourself. I want to promote a culture of forgiveness and growth. We can't fix hate with more hate. Let's all be nice to each other. I'd love to hear the reasons why you might think these things aren't problems. And to that same point, hear me and other creators out why we think these are problems. With all of that, thank you sincerely for watching this video. And make sure to listen to people more educated on the matters than me. Thanks.